black and white issues of color. Take a couple seconds to silently study this black and white photograph. Pay attention to the details. See how many different things you can notice. Look closely. Now, turn to your neighbor and for about five seconds, tell your neighbor maybe three things that you noticed. See if you can each come up with different things. So what did you say? Did you notice how the photograph looks a little bit old? And did you notice that she's a young girl and she's nicely dressed? A cute blouse under a pinafore, a little jacket. And did you notice her great big smile? Did you dare to mention the color of her skin? So what's your opinion? Do you think this is an ordinary girl? This, in fact, is Ruby Nell Bridges in 1960 at the age of six. Ruby was an ordinary girl, but she was also extraordinary. When she was six years old, she lived with her mother and father. Her father was a service station attendant, and her mother worked different jobs to help support the family. Ruby had a couple of younger brothers and sisters. She lived in New Orleans, and she attended an all-black school. At that time, black and white students did not attend the same schools. Can you imagine going to different schools from your friends just based on your skin color? However, in the year that Ruby was born, in 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court had ordered all schools in the nation to desegregate, but New Orleans, Louisiana was slow to comply. In 1960, when Ruby was six years old, the age in this picture, a federal court ordered New Orleans public schools to desegregate. So what does that mean? Desegregate is a pretty big word. Let's break it down. The root of the word is greg, which means herd, flock, or mob. You can think of it as a group. The prefix se, c, means to keep that apart. So we're talking about keeping a group apart. And then the word d, the prefix, means to reverse or to do the opposite. So in this case, it means to stop keeping a group apart. So in other words, we're beginning to mix groups together. And this was progress in our nation at that time. Have you ever had to put yourself into an uncomfortable position for something you believe? Ruby did just that. In fact, not only was it uncomfortable for her, it was dangerous. So for her parents, it was a difficult decision. In 1960, the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Color People, was requesting children to participate in the integration of New Orleans white schools. Six students took and passed an exam. Two of these students opted not to follow through on the, pro through on the program. Three went to another elementary school and Ruby, alone and by herself, was the only student to integrate William France Elementary School in New Orleans. Her first day was November 14, 1960. And because it was a bit dangerous for her safety, Ruby was escorted to and from school by federal marshals. Because there was so much opposition to the integration of the public white schools, walking to and from school was a bit dangerous for Ruby. There were crowds of protesters along the way who yelled at her and jeered. They threw things at Ruby. So for her safety, federal marshals were assigned to protect her. For the first few days, Ruby's mother also walked along, but after that, she let Ruby go alone. The federal marshals were there to help her. Unfortunately, at the school, many of the white families actually withdrew their children. Even the teachers refused to work with Ruby, and a very special lady named Mrs. Barbara Henry was hired to be Ruby's teacher. So Ruby had her own classroom. In a moment, I'm gonna show you a picture painted by an artist 
of Ruby's Walk to School. But first, let me introduce you to the artist that painted the picture. His name is Norman Rockwell. He was born in 1894 and 1978, and he was an American. He is known for paintings of charming, iconic scenes of American life. But he also liked to paint images with political content that were sometimes controversial. To the right are some of Rockwell's well-known paintings, and the show is finishing with something that you might be entertained by since we all live near Chicago. So here we have two images. On the left is a photograph, and that's young Ruby leaving school with a couple of her federal marshals escorting her. And on the right, we have Norman Rockwell's interpretation of the event. His painting was completed in 1964, and it's called The Problem We All Live With. In a way, Rockwell's painting could be com compared to the genre of historical fiction and literature. This very scene may not have happened quite as he depicted it, but Rockwell has presented an interpretation of the event. Now we're going to take a closer look. We're going to study the picture from an art perspective. So first, I want you to notice the limited color palette. The painting is mostly done in neutrals, except for the bright yellow bands of the marshals and that juicy red tomato splatted on the back wall. These small spots of color should draw your attention. They are important to this image. Most of the rest of the picture is painted in light, muted, neutral tones. Notice the color of the wall, the sidewalk, and the marshals uh, suits that they're wearing. Value in the art world means areas of light and dark. And if you look at this painting, Ruby's skin is the darkest element in this picture. Somehow it even seems darker than the black shoes on the marshal's feet. Her dress is a brilliant white and she has on white shoes. In art, we call these extreme differences high contrast. And Norman Rockwell uses this difference here to remind us of the issue of racial tension. Notice also the repetition in the movement as everyone is stepping forward. The marshals are all in the same pose. Their suits are neatly pressed. There's a formality in the way they walk. And notice Ruby close behind the front marshals with her back straight. Her gaze is up and forward and she looks confident as she walks ahead. They surround her. They're on the edges of the picture to the left and the right. They are protecting her. And notice how Rockwell crops the image so that you don't see their faces. And this is a way of showing that they're really not that important in this photograph. What is important about them is the way that they are encapsulating Ruby. They're protecting her. In history, though, really, we did find out who the marshals were, and they've been interviewed. And actually, Ruby Bridges has even talked with some of them. Did you notice that tomato, how it's been thrown against the wall, it slid down, and then it hit the floor. I think it's really wonderful that Rockwell put that tomato behind her. It's in her past. It's not in her future. And do you notice very subtly drawn on the back wall, there's a racial epithet? Do you think that Ruby would have noticed that? Her gaze is definitely forward and not off to the side. I'm not sure she would have given it any notice. There's also the letters KKK written on the wall in front of the foremost marshal, just above his hand. A painting like a photograph is a frozen moment. There's no element of time, but in reality, in the very next minute, Ruby will have passed all of these things. But what lies ahead for her in her future, and what lies ahead for all of us? Here's a photograph of adult Ruby Bridges visiting the White House and talking with President Barack Obama, viewing the painting, The Problem We All Live With. The reason why the painting was there is that it was on a temporary display, and that was done at the request of Ruby Bridges herself. I think it's really interesting if you think about it. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges in real life integrated the New Orleans public schools and six-year-old Ruby Bridges, immortalized in Norman Rockwell's painting, made it all the way to the White House. Barack Obama himself said to her, I think it's fair to say that if it hadn't been for you guys, I might not be here and we might not be looking at this together. I 
I hope you enjoyed learning about Ruby Bridges and this event in American history. I hope you also enjoyed looking at Norman Rockwell's interpretation of this event in his painting called The Problem We All Live With. For more information, your teacher has some supplementary materials, including an essay written by Ruby Bridges herself. She has a website that you can look at for more information. Your teacher also has a response sheet. On the front is a small photograph of this painting and a prompt. The prompt asks you to write a diary page, a day in the life, and it is supposed to be for November 14, 1960, so the first day that Ruby went to William France School. You can write your Dear Diary entry from the perspective of Ruby, or maybe from her shoes walking to school. You could be the tomato against the wall. You could be her father or her mother debating about whether or not you want Ruby to even go on this journey. So have fun with your writing, be imaginative, really try to get yourself into the picture and into the time in history and see what you can come up with. Good luck and have fun.